Welcome back, MTG Joe here. We're here for another installment of the weekly meta breakdown where we look at the top performing decks on the MTG Arena ladder. This video is gonna be for standard best of one, and we're gonna cover the top decks leading into the end of the March season. The ladder just reset, so we'll take a look at Diamond and Mythic ranks, see where fo what folks are playing, what was working well uh, to close out the season. Most likely, just given the upcoming schedule with Thunder Junction, this is probably gonna be my last best of one standard video. For about the next week or so until we get the new set out and then we'll come out with uh, some more frequent updates on that uh, the meta has been pretty cannibalized from like what you see on the screen pretty late in the cycle so folks are kind of limiting in terms of what's being presented in terms of new decks um so we're just it's kind of boring to be honest sometimes talking about the same Celestia enchantments deck for like eight months now but uh, we will jump into it, Diamond Mythic Rank. I will paste all these deck lists in the video description with timestamps so you can copy them. As always, the data gets from untapped, comes from untapped GG, what you see on the screen. A link to untapped is in the video description if you want to get started with them. Um, so, popularity of the day. These are the most popular decks from Diamond Mythic Rank. They're not the highest win rate decks, but a lot of folks, 55%, are playing Boros Convoke. So more than half the games are against the Convoke deck. Most notably, if you haven't been keeping up with spoilers, Thunder Junction is printing the rest of the fast land cycles, including Inspiring Vantage, the Boros dual land that was missing from the deck. That actually will improve the deck quite a bit, just because its biggest kind of shortcoming right now, I find, is its mana inconsistencies. Having another untapped dual land turns one through three is very important uh, for this type of deck. We also have Gruul Aggro making up about a quarter of the meta, and then Azorius Control at 6%. So pretty cannibalized. If we kind of look at the filters, if we go up to Mythic, it's just kind of further condensed. And if we look at today uh, in kind of the... So this okay. So keep in mind, this is from the la like the first kind of day of resetted ladder data. So people are ranking up again. If we look at Platinum, where all the Mythic folks would have been restarted, we have like Mono Red at 20%, Convoke at 17%, and then a bunch of like three to five percent is kind of falling in line with that. But it's interesting to see just um, like the folks that have made the diamond already after about a day or so heavily situated in terms of convoke. Um, so always interested to kind of see where those trends lead up. We're going to look at 150,000 games of best of one for today uh, and looking at the highest performing decks and starting with Rakdos and we're going to use Rakdos in air quotes. Mono red splash for one black card, 67% uh, win rate. So what's this deck looking to do? It's an aggressive mono red deck with a bunch of different pump style effects. You have things like Antagonize, uh, you have Blazing Crescendo, you have Monstrous Rage, you have Mirren uh, Blade, Bane Splitter, Felonous Rage, all ways to just pump up your creatures. It's kind of an all in aggressively slanted deck. And then you have access to Callus Cell Sword, and you're using the Burn Together ability to then throw the creature at your opponent. Uh, you can do that with like Cacophony sc Scamp, and then if it has like extra power to it, you get to deal with kind of double damage that way there, which is kind of cool. Uh, Fugitive Code Breaker, so Spear, just a bunch of prowess threats. The Picnic Runer gets double strike as well, which is nice uh, for the deck. And then a single copy of Case just for some card advantage. A very very aggressive deck you're looking to kind of dodge incidental removal but could pump through huge amounts of damage very quickly moving on we go to five color domain 66.7 percent so only real kind of innovation in the deck is some of the decks are now playing an imidane's recruiter since you generate a whole bunch of mana you can at times cast herd migration and then give your whole team haste if you have access to nine mana so it gives you then access to 5 times 4, so 20, 20 damage, 23 damage, and one kind of out of nowhere kind of attack step. Otherwise, just a lot of ramp with the deck. Uh, get into your like Sunfalls, Archangel of Rats. Uh, we've seen some versions play like earlier kind of interaction spells, but this one's just really he hedging on the mid to late game in it. Cavern of Souls helps with casting your angels as well. Then we go to Gruel Aggro. So this is at 62.4%. So similar elements to the mono red deck, 
Um, but with the addition of green, you get things like Audacity, which provide trample and kind of replace themselves. Giant Growth is a pump effect. High Virus Stand could be a pump effect and protection. Busting Druid for card advantage. You have Amaya as another beater. And then Picnic Ruiner can be used for both modes here, the Stolen Goodies, as a way to put some counters on creatures you control as well. So similar kind of concepts. Uh, the Mono Red one's probably a little bit more all-in, but is more explosive with the Fling style effect. Then go to Boros Convoke, 61, 62%. So most played by margin and towards the top of the win rates as well. Um, we're seeing kind of splits between Sanguine Evangelist, War Leader's Call. This is kind of the flex spot of the deck that you typically see. Uh, and then sometimes the numbers of Yodian Frontliner may differ as well. You can see very quickly here, like just being able to replace like the Thrans Portal and honestly, even like the Sundown Pass and maybe like a Myrex with just four fast lines will do a big job and just in terms of smoothing out the meta. But this deck's very, very explosive. It's nut draws, can present a lot of power. Like turn one, Novice Inspector, Valdarian Epiture. Turn two, Gleeful, the Artifact. You could play another one drop and Convoke. Uh, like the Knight Errant all in the same turn, so it just presents like 10 plus power in play on turn two. Moving on, we go to Mono Blue Tempos. This is a budget deck that's been putting up fairly reasonable results um, at 61%, and it's kind of a tempo artifacts theme shell. So you have like the cheap flyers or evasive creatures, Ginger Brute, Network Disruptor, Spyglass Siren. You have the ninja package of Moon Circuit Hacker that could draw you cards when it's ninjutsued in, as well as proper, Prosperous Thief. And then you have your kind of animate artifacts. So Zoetic Glyph and Unctus's Retrofitter uh, both can like boost up a Ginger Brute or a Network Disruptor. You get the map token here. You can get treasure tokens. You can get High Speed Hover Bike. All kind of get better in that respect. Um, and then... Really the only rare in the decks in Ottawara. Uh, if you will have the Mishra's Foundries, you can play Mishra's Foundries instead of Roadside Reliquary, just to give you another attacking creature in as well. Board and over, we go to Azorius Control, 60%. So a bunch of sweepers, bunch of removals. Uh, March, this version's well-suited for best of one between March, Soul Partition, a lot of cheap interaction, Sunset Revelry, Temporary Lockdown, and then your sweeper package. Realm Tree can be used for mill uh, in kind of like an alt win condition. No deduce in this version, just playing more to the fact that best of one is a more aggressive format. Your main win conditions are like Jace, Realm Breaker Mill, Wandering Emperor, the token from Sunfall can win games, your opponent's Despair, uh, or even like your creature lands in like Restless Anchorage, for example. Then we go to Bant Toxic, 59%. So Bant is really blue white toxic splash venerated rot priest. You have a lot of utility lands with seed core and myrex to help supplement it. Um, but you want to put poison counters on your opponents and then protect your stuff. Uh, March swirling mist can do that. Experimental augury can proliferate after. Void snare proliferates as well. So you have interaction that can also add to the poison counters. So you have like seven pieces of bounce. You can bounce your own things and then get the targets there for the like rot priest. Removal with Annex Century, and then Skrull's Hive as kind of another engine of the deck. And finally, we head over to Cheskai Control, 59%. So elements of the blue-white control, Soul Partition, No More Lies, March of Otherworldly Light. With the access to red, you get uh, Lightning Helix, so removal, but also gain you some life. The Fairy slows the sunset, can play really nicely with the Celestis to kind of give you almost cast itself for free you pay four but if you have celestis out already then you make back two mana by untapping a land as well it also provides life gain to the deck uh zergo and ojita is another win condition of the deck along with chandra's hopes beacon still have your anchorage in the mana base uh interesting you'll see a cavern of souls to name dragons for the mirror as well this is it for the week like i said there's not huge amounts of innovation the enchantment decks are still fine um I just don't want to talk about the green white enchantment deck that we've been it's literally the same deck since like kamigawa block there's not much changed from there but uh let me know if you're still enjoying standard best of one we'll cover about a few of the other formats and we'll take it from there thanks for watching everyone hope you have a great one stay safe out there